Hey guys, today we will talk about two basic telecom principles, wavelength and frequency, and I'll show you how you can calculate these two. Now, unless you're a student or someone who works with antenna design, you may not really feel the need to have to calculate frequency or wavelength every day. It's not like you wake up one morning and while making your morning coffee or breakfast, you say to yourself, you know what, maybe today I should calculate wavelength and frequency right after my breakfast. No, it doesn't happen that way. But let me tell you this, wavelength and frequency are absolutely essential in mobile telecoms. In fact, they're more important to mobile telecoms than your breakfast is to you. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about some definitions here. What is wavelength and what is frequency? Since we are talking about mobile telecoms, we will only talk about radio waves. So if you look at this picture on the screen, the wavelength of a radio wave is the length of one complete wave cycle from start to finish, as shown by the red lines in the diagram. On the other hand, the frequency of a radio wave is the number of wave cycles generated by the transmitting antennas in one second. So one second is the time period in which the frequency is measured. Now, if you look at these two pictures on the screen, this shows the difference between low and high frequency waves. The top picture has less number of wave cycles per time period, while the bottom one has many more cycles per time period. The time period is in seconds, and one cycle per second is called one hertz. In mobile telecoms, you hear about frequencies in megahertz and gigahertz. In this comparison between low and high frequencies, so if you look at the top and bottom pictures, you can also see that the length of a wave shrinks when the frequency increases. This demonstrates the relationship between frequency and wavelength. When one goes up, the other one goes down. So mathematically speaking, wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. The mathematical formula is F equals C divided by lambda, where F is the frequency, C is the speed of light, and lambda is the wavelength. You can use this formula to calculate frequency if you know the wavelength, and you can calculate the wavelength if you know the frequency. If you ever look at some of these big events or conferences on 5G, you're likely to see some senior executives like CEOs and CFOs, etc., sitting around a table and talking about how 5G is going to transform our lives. If you listen carefully, you may even hear a senior executive saying something like this. I think the millimeter wave in 5G is going to truly transform our lives and society. In my personal view, the millimeter wave is the very reason why 5G is so very different from 4G and earlier technologies. Now, when this guy stops talking, he may even look around the table at other people listening intently and may even be nodding along as if they know exactly what this guy is talking about. But ladies and gentlemen, there's a good chance that most people around the table do not have a clue as to what this guy is talking about. In fact, there's a possibility that the guy himself may not know exactly what he's talking about. But let me take a stab at it to help you understand what this guy is talking about. A millimeter wave is a wave that is very short, which means the wavelength is very small. In fact, it is so small that you can measure it in millimeters, hence the term millimeter wave. Now, you already know that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional, which means that when the wavelength of a mobile signal is higher, the frequency is lower, and when the wavelength is really small, like a millimeter wave, the frequency is really high. So, a millimeter wave means extremely high frequencies, and by extremely high, we mean frequencies of 30 gigahertz or higher. Theoretically, the range for millimeter waves is from 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. High frequencies can accommodate much bigger channel bandwidth, which means much bigger mobile data rates. On the other hand, if you have frequencies which are lower, that means lower channel bandwidths or smaller or lower data rates. So a millimeter wave makes sure that the frequencies are higher, which means you can get much higher data rates. And not only that, higher frequencies also make sure that the latencies are much lower. Lower latencies make sure that the delays are lower, which is great for online gaming. 
And that is a key benefit of millimeter waves, which is why senior executives like talking about it. Okay, now let's have a look at our wavelength and frequency calculators and see how we calculate things here. Let's first look at the wavelength calculator. If we take a frequency higher than 30 gigahertz, let's say 40 gigahertz, so 40 gigahertz will be 40,000 megahertz, so let's type 40,000 in the frequency field here. And then hit the calculate button. That gives you 0 0.75 centimeters, which is 7.5 millimeters. Now that is a millimeter wave. Let's now have a look at the frequency calculator. Here you will need to enter the wavelength so that you can calculate the frequency. If we type 1 millimeter in the wavelength field, which is 0.001 meters, and hit the calculate button, we get 299.792 megahertz, which is 299.79 gigahertz, or approximately 300 gigahertz. So that shows you how a millimeter wave ensures that the frequencies are really high. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you want to check out these calculators, have a look at the links in the description below. And check them out right now if you want to have some geeky fun with wavelength and frequency calculators.